Uh, I, I welcome you all for this Future IT 4.0 webinar series on Network Protocol Analyzer. On behalf of management, principal, HOD, CAC, and my own behalf, I welcome our source person, Mr. S. Vamanujam, Technical Manager, Asia Pacific Region, Alcatel Lucent Enterprise India Private Limited, Bangalore. It is my privilege and honor to introduce him, who is basically from Madurai. He did his PG Network Engineering, his uh, specialization from Arimuri Kalasning College of Engineering, affiliated to Anna University, Chennai. Uh, he is my senior also. And he is presently working as a technical manager, Asia Pacific, Alcatel Lucent Enterprise India Private. Mm -hmm. In Asia Pacific, including China. Previously, he was Western uh, assistant, uh, assistant Professor of the Department of CSE, Arnold Kalasarin College of Engineering, as well as he is a project manager, project engineer in Taifa Core in Network Engineering. Uh, uh, I will proudly have you here for this session. I welcome you all, sir. Uh, I extend my hearty welcome to our faculty members, uh, faculty members, research scholars, PG and UG students from various engineering colleges, arts and science colleges and universities and my dear students from Point of Technology. I welcome you all. I hope this is a wonderful session for all who are very much interested in networking area, especially network traffic engineering analyzer. Uh, we request participants to mute your audio as well as video, which will save your bandwidth. Uh, at last, at the end of the session, uh, we will share the feedback link to you. You can use that link and you, you will get your certificates. And also, you can able to ask the question to the resource person through the chat box uh, at the end of the session. Uh, that's all. With this few words, I will hand over the session to Mr. Ramonijam, sir. Sir, please. Uh, thank you, Gondari Nayakam. Uh, Good morning, friends. Welcome. And I think the topic seems to be uh, like future IT. I really doubt when I was discussing with Gomadhi Nayagam, what is the future IT? So, as of now, everything, okay, every day we are having development in every technology. So, there is no anything specific for future IT. But he explained me what is the concept of this and how. We want to encourage you in technology and to learn information related to the technology. So the topic was selected as future IT and under this uh, series, so we are going to have uh, the session like network uh, protocol analysis. So anything we can uh, go ahead. <coughs> okay, before moving ahead, so just I would like to uh, inform you, if you are having any doubts, uh, if you want, you can raise it, you can have a chat. If not, at the end, we can have the uh, QA discussion. And since it's like very limited time, it's like for owner, so most of the basics can is has been covered. And even I think some of the information you will be knowing when you have studied uh, Tannenbaum or the computer networks, William Stallings. So, it's like starting from the basics and it seems to be like a session one because we can have many sessions and this is going to be the session one just giving a step zero and what is the need for analyzer, what is the protocol analyzer, how we can use it. Okay, just very simple examples we can have. If you are having your computer before you, you can always uh, open that and whenever I'm giving injection, you can also check and then you can use it on your own. Okay. So we'll start. It's network protocol analyzer. So what we are going to cover in this uh, session is like first introduction to network protocol analyzer. And so we are going to uh, analyze the network. So first of all, I need to know what is the network. So network layered approach. It's not like I'm not going to teach you OSA layer or TCP, or we are not going to discuss anything on the OSA layer, but still why this layered approach is needed. Then what is the need for network protocol analyzer? And some examples of network protocol analyzers. So I think list of network protocol analyzer. And we will see 
uh, like two to three examples of uh, how to use that analyzer and how we can real time capture the network and how we can segregate the packet, how we can see what is going, uh, what is done, how the bits bytes the information is transmitted in the wire. Even wireless, we can use it, but I cannot give you the uh, demo in wireless uh, in this session, but we will go with wire, one real-time or two real-time uh, sessions, we can have it. And after that, uh, there are some captures which is already loaded, so that we will see in this session. Okay. So everyone can view my presentation, correct? Gomadi Naiga. Sir, you are not sharing your screen. Oh, that's okay. Yes, I have shared my screen. So now you can able to see my screen, right? The presentation. Uh, not it, sir. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, now, now. It's yes, you can see the first screen, future IT network protocol on laser, right? Okay. So with your confirmation, I'll move ahead. So this yes, is- Yes, sir. Yes, you can do. This is the agenda which I have discussed with you and First, we'll go with this. So what is the network protocol analyzer? Yes, I can, from the name itself, I can able to understand, I'm going to do some analysis in some of the data. So it's a software tool, which is used to capture from the network. Of capture Excuse me, Ramana, Excuse me, Ramana, yes, Please hide the, uh, that meeting, google.com bar. Uh, next to the stop sharing option, please edit. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. So this is the software tool which used to capture and analyze the data, data traffic in the network. Not only data traffic, even voice traffic, even wireless traffic. All the traffic can be captured with this software tool. Okay, it's a freely available tool. I think many tools are available. And what we will do? So we will measure the device for examining what has happened inside the network cable. So how the data are transmitted, what is happening? And from with this data, so whether I can able to build a statistical approach, a statistical information like graphical views and alarms. So what is the purpose of the alarm? So normally the network administrators will be using this alarm if the load of the network is increasing. So how can the load of the network will be increased? Yes, I'm having a bandwidth, I'm having an internet line of one gig or 10 gig capacity, but thousand users are using, I'm going to use more than my load. So the data in the network is going to increase more than 10 gig capacity. At that time, what it will be done? more data will be lost because most of the data will be in waiting to send it. Once the time to live becomes zero, so the data will be lost. I think you guys have studied in your operating system or I think you have taught in your operating system queues, buffers, stacks, everything. So this is the load. So when it, we are reaching 90% of the load, so alarms can be there. And error conditions, yes, if any malformed packets or corrupted information or corrupted packets are transmitted in the network, yes, that can also be captured and analyzed. And if any workstation, new workstation is introduced, like nowadays we are going in the concept of BYOD, 
you guys know that it's bring your own device. So maybe in 2021, most of the IT industries will go with this concept, BYOD, because now we are used to work from home, it's successful. So most of the IT companies now, they uh, want to work from home. So they will ask the experts to use their own devices. So bring your own device, that's BYOD. So any new MAC address, if it is introduced in the network, that will also be and packets with specific words. Yes, nowadays, this is one of the major, uh, uh, I think, innovation or we are going about from whom to whom. I'm going to say, but I'm going to check the data. What is to the server or from the server to the user or between the users? So specific word. So that if you can always have a QoS, quality of service, or some commands to restrict the, okay, these words I don't want to use, like cinema, a movie, IMP3, MP4, like that. So, very packet inspection, we can go with that. So, that can also be analyzed with this network protocol analyzers and specific to some destinations. So, normally to your server, no one should send a packet because if they flood the packet to your server, then the server will go down. So that will be a network down situation. Totally the campus will be, uh, there won't be network connectivity because there will be a loop or so much of traffic which exceeds the load. So all these can be analyzed using this protocol analyzer. So this is one of the major it's a freeware. Every anyone can use it, and if you learn, then you will be uh, understanding what's the reality, how it is happening. And the next point is like broadcast packets, directing broadcast, indicate that from where it is sent. So, sir, really, I don't know what is broadcast, how it can be done. Okay, so. Uh, most I think since I'm just discussing with most of the faculty members and the students, you have uh, heard about or you have learned or you have thought about the spanning tree protocol. We know that spanning tree is used to avoid the loop in the network. So why? If there is a loop, what is going to happen in my network? Yes, if there is a loop, then the same frame will be transmitted in the network as a loop. So that will increase the bandwidth, that will increase the utilization. So those are broadcast. And if any user is sending a packet to an unknown destination, then those are broadcast packets. It will be sent to all the posts, all the users. So that will also be directed by this analysis. Okay. So I told you I'm not going to teach you and I think I'm not going to discuss anything about what are the layers and all. But why we need to have a layered approach in networking? Is it really needed? Sir, I'm having a network. I'm going to send the data. I can directly send in the wire. Why a layered approach is needed? So mainly in data communication, we are not going to send the data as a whole. We are going to fragment it. We are going to break the tasks who is going to do the job and how the job is done and how it is delivered and what is delivered to the end customer or end user. So like that, data communication breaks into series of tasks or components where the functionality is defined independently of each and every layer. Even though there is a constant communication between the layers, but every individual layer is having its own functionality. So this is the major advantage of this layered network because if I'm going to introduce a new protocol like uh, ERP, MVRP, like that, so I don't want to worry about how the data is transmitted. So I'm going to think in a way how my application layer how I can integrate in this protocol in the application layer, the, like a user interface, and how the data will be transmitted, and what 
port i have to use it if it is like a noon port okay so like this and we will have more vendors it won't be like vendor dependent it will be vendor independent and so many vendors so many researchers they will be there and they can develop new protocols as per the requirement and the technology development just it's a small example so we all know that if i want to send a parcel from chennai to uh, rajapalayam okay so th there is no any same person will be hand wherever i am handing over the parcel to some person he is not going to uh, take the parcel to rajapalayam and hand over it to the destination so there are some different carriers so there will be a booking office somebody will be booking and somebody will be transporting it and to the local office in rajapalayam and from there somebody will be delivering so it's a layer but it's they will be doing their own functionality it's really vendor independent any vendor can use this okay so when we are talking about the layered network and why we need the layered network there are some ways there are some uh, protocols how it's going to work and uh, how we can have the source communication and the destination communication so mainly for this we are having some logical ports it's not a physical port it's logical ports okay so some examples of the logical ports i have given here so like normally they are uh, it's a 16 bit unassigned number okay so for example this logical port uh, like port number 20 and 21 will be used for file transfer protocol ftp when you are transferring a protocol before that you will be checking whether the file can be transferred that is a command so it will be using 21 and data transfer it will be using port number 20 so the destination will also know okay i am going to get some file from this source through the ftp protocol or i am using a different source but i am accessing the ftp server so my destination will know that so this communication has to go through this port so as everyone knows that just it's a refresh 1024 ports are known as well known ports 021204 and the higher number ports are ephemeral ports and used as per as randomly as per the requirement okay so mainly we i think you guys you have seen that port number 80 which is used for http and port number 161 which is used for snmp uh 23 or uh, 22 ss sky chan telnet so now we are not using port using telnet because of security breach and we are uh, using port number 22 for secure cell access ss h okay so what is the need for protocol analyzer so we have discussed what is protocol analyzer what is the lead approach and what is the need for protocol analyzer first with the protocol analyzer we can identify the issue if there is an issue in the network we would able to identify the root cause by accessing the traffic across the network in all the switches so i can able to do that i can give the ip range i can give a ip or from which source to which destination i can able to give that information in my protocol analyzer and get the data then deep if there is any performance issues so what is slow downs so i am having a 10 gig connectivity internet connectivity but still inside my campus if i am using uh, if i am using the network it's very slow normally we will think that my pc is very slow because my c drive is full or my memory is full ram is full i am having very less ram i am not getting the file it's taking more time to load so even though there are some other performance issues in the network so that will also slow down so that can also be identified using this protocol analyzer so pcap is a file okay it's a packet capture it's nothing just name is abbreviated so it's a pcap is a file where we can get the live traffic and we can do the analysis to measure the network response time how long is taking to respond if i am uh, trying to contact a person in my network it should not take uh, minimum one second it should be less than that it should be in milliseconds okay 
but if it is taking five minutes for me to reach that person, then there is a major issue in my network and network administrator has to check what is going on in the network. So dig deep into the slowdowns or the performance issues and we can always analyze the traffic. So how much of TCP traffic, how much of UDP traffic, how much of uh, uh, like uh, .on X, it's like um, what I can give you. Uh, use of authentication, authentication traffic, if there is any security level, and <clears> HTTP <throat> traffic. So we can always have a segregation of the traffic based on the traffic, TCP, UDP, HTTP, and it's purely based on the protocol what we are using, and we can always analyze the traffic patterns and traffic types with this. And with this protocol analysis, we can improve the bandwidth. My analyzer is not going to do anything. By analyzing the data, I can be able to see what type of traffic, how much, whether it's a broadcast, or it's a multicast, or it's a unicast, and from that, if it is generated from the same source, then it may be a loop, or it may be some other issues, it's malfunctioning, the device is not working, or device is, the NIC card is generating more traffic, and are some, devices which are faulty in the network, they are misbehaving, which is consuming more of my bandwidth. So to improve the bandwidth, we can always go for the network path analysis. Means that uh, you all know that the network architecture like access layer, distribution layer, and the core layer, still we are following the scene. Okay, after that we are having a data center, the core layer we are having that data center. After that it's considered as a van. So hook by hook means from the access, from the user to access, access to distribution, distribution to core. I can be able to analyze the uh, uh, traffic and have a network path analysis, network pattern, and we can be able to improve the bandwidth. Mainly bandwidth improvements will be done between the core and the distribution and not from the distribution to the access. So only that should be having the high capacity because the all the user traffic from the access to the distribution will be consolidated and that will be sent to the core. So that there we need to have a bandwidth improvement. So that will, this protocol analysis will help us to achieve uh, the bandwidth and security. Yes, security as I told you, broadcast, more form packets. So to improve the security, we can always do a analysis of the traffic across the network and we can get even burst traffic. Uh, that's the thing, unusual spikes. So bursty traffic, some packet uh, because of, uh, like if you're using IPTVs, if you're continuously changing the channels, okay, so from I'm, I'm doing a channel change, I'm, I don't want to see channel one, I want to go for channel 50, channel 70, channel 100, like that. If you are continuously changing the channel, the data will be sent from channel one, channel 100, channel 500, like that, and there will be burst at the particular period. After that, just if you left the remote, so you'll be having a normal data, there won't be any spike. So that can also be analyzed and from which source we are getting that spikes and we can always intimate them. So this is causing more issues, performance issues in the network. So maybe you can leave it or if you need some help, we are ready to, this is mainly uh, in the uh, very big the hospitality network and the hospital networks and mainly like uh, government agencies, not for the university network that we are, we are, we want education. Under the education vertical, normally we won't go for more uh, security later. Okay. So, what are the available analysis? This is, uh, there are so many analysis available. So just, I have given only four for your uh, understanding and we are going to see only one analysis. Wireshark. Wireshark, as I told you, deep packet inspection. So I can directly go into the packet. I can check what is going on, what is transmitting in my network. I can go, I can check the data. Really, we are going to see the capture now. We are going to do a live capture and we can see that what is going into that packet. You can see that. So deep inspection of the network traffic 
and we can always have a live capture with the live capture we can have the live capture statistics and offline analysis so we can always have that live capture statistics and offline analysis so i'm going to give a, a demo now after this slide so we will be working on this uh, wireshark okay then colasoft colasoft yes you can see the uh, small image which i have pasted in uh, i think inside of each and every topic like wireshark it's small one you can see some black lines and colasoft captcha yes you can see some graphs graphical representations and some the graphs and the data also okay so mainly colasoft what we will be doing if i am having a sample packet i can generate that packet to send it in the network so it's it can also be used as a packet generator but i need to know what is a packet i need to know how to build the packet so that will be complete we can utilize that and we can generate the packet if you are not uh, Uh, complying with the complete packet structure then you won't be you can't send that packet it will be considered as a error packet or mal form you can't send that so get a sample packet load it in colasoft you can generate thousands and thousands of packet and you should not use it for any other security issue but still it's that of monitoring and troubleshooting we can use this colasoft capture then solar bits so most of the companies are uh, institution they will be using this uh, solar winds network performance monitor so region wise now the offices are separated so the totally if they are having a uh, nms network uh, monitoring server in that they can, they will be using solar winds to detect diagnose what is the traffic what is going on between these two end stations between these two offices between these two branches between the countries so everything can be detected diagnosed and if there is any network performance issues that can also be resolved to avoid the major network breakdown or network downtime so that is solar winds and it's it's also equivalent to wireless it's not like uh, yes prtg so prtg is also network monitor but there are many limitation even though we can have a pie chart or many charts with prtg but there are some uh, limitations like it won't check for packet payloads you know the packet payloads is an extra data which we are sending in the packets so like our deep inspection it won't do prtg won't do that but it will capture the packets it will analyze the packet headers so we are going to see that how the packet header and we will compare the capture as well as the ethernet header ip header how it's going to okay. so this uh, is a sum of the protocol analysis and uh, we are going to see the wireshark okay so what is wireshark so it's free you can directly if you go go to google you can download it so wireshark it's a free and open source packet analyzer what's the purpose as i told you the packet inspection can be done means inside the packet what is the data okay so troubleshooting can be done this analysis with the wireshark we can able to capture the data and we can troubleshoot the network we can do the analysis we can get the statistics and we can use it for protocol development also so how we can use it for protocol development so here this wireshark is going to capture the packets and then okay so we can we know the packet structure everything is predefined everything is a standard so we know how the packet header should be and we will develop the packet how long the packet payload can be the what is the size of the packet we can always develop in the software so like cisco like juniper alcatel uh, other companies i think they can they are working on this they are doing their own development in protocol enhancements as i told you erp is uh, previously we have used erp1 okay ethernet ring protection okay uh, erp1 and that now we are going for erp version 2 and version 3 like uh, you can see except chennai metro i think in india all the metros like kochi metro mumbai metro uh, kolkata metro 
now it's known as a greater metro is like in Ahmedabad with 200 substations. So all these metros we are managing, I'll get to loosen this, uh, uh, we are managing and then we know that all these stations are connected in with ERP. So all the stations are connected. So it is going to be a ring. There will be a source station and there will be an end station and end, should, end and source should also be connected. Then only the traffic signaling will be working and the passenger, uh, uh, I think the platform informations will be working, display boards will be working and the train timings can be calculated. So you can nowadays see the boards in informational boards in Metro saying that the next train in 15 minutes or next train in 10 minutes, next train in two minutes, how it's calculated. So all the stations are interconnected and it is going to be a loop. So, huh? sir, I cannot use a loop in the network because it's going to have more broadcast in the network. Yes, for that only we have gone with spanning tree, the advanced level of spanning tree, which won't use spanning tree, it's a new technology, it's ERP. So here also, now we have gone with version, new, new versions like ERP with two rings, with three rings. Only the main offices, of, like for every four or five stations, there will be one HQ, one headquarters. Okay, after four or five stations, there will be one main branch. So all the main branches will be connected. So what is the purpose? So if main branches are connected, if one branch is going down, so the other branch will be serving and it will be providing the connectivity to the all the other stations. If we are relying on only one branch, then if the network is down or if there is any power fluctuation, so totally it will be uh, down and the tra train transport will be stopped. So instead of that, we are going with this type of ring topology and then these are new protocols which we are coming up and we are using that with new, new versions, three rings, two rings. Okay. So it's ERP. Okay, then mainly the communication protocol development and capturing traffic from many different medias, even your Bluetooth communication, we can capture the data between two uh, Bluetooth devices. We can able to capture the data. 802.11, okay, dot 11. Okay, that's wireless LAN. That data can also be captured. Ethernet, our wired network through USB. Yes, we can capture everything and we can save it in the file and we can use it for analysis. And we can also have uh, filters. I I need only the HTTP information. I need only TCP information. So I can able to filter to limit the scope of the data. Okay. Very simple, I think if you type Google, uh, go to Google, if you type Wireshark, then uh, mm. there'll be a link. You can just download the link and you can install in your PC. There won't be any issue, okay? It's a protocol analyzer. And this is the structure, okay, of this protocol analyzer after opening that. So I will show you how to open it. So normally this is the screen where you can capture the packets, you can analyze and you can get the detailed information. So the top one, you can able to see that the menus, command, file, edit, view, and all the other things are there. Then you can see a white color box, that's a text box, where you can have rules, you can have formulas. Formulas are rules which I'm just selecting. I'm going to filter only my source, the packets which are with this source, like 1.1.1.1. If the source IP is 1.1.1.1, only I need those packets in my capture. Or if my destination IP is 1.1, then I need that capture. Or if my MAC source MAC or destination MAC are protocol based, only TCP packets, only UDP packets, only ICMP packets, or only HTTP. So that filters can be used on the display filter specification. So that's an expression, you have to give that. That's the format, how to use that. So it's purely as per your hands on, you will be knowing what's what. So every help is there, so you can always use the help outsource.dst, src.dst. That's it. You cannot type like source uh, space IP equal to or not equal to. That's a syntax, so you have to follow the syntax or the filters. And after enabling this filter, or if you, if you don't want the filter, then you can capture the packets in the third screen like listing of captured packets. You can see some green color, purple, and then some black color 
information. So here with Wireshark, we can always have a coloring code also. So all TCP here, as per this example, all TCP are in green. And there are also some other TCP packets which are in black. So that is for specific other protocols and they are using so we can able to have the color coding and even HTTP in purple. So color coding can also be there just by viewing your screen. You can see, okay, this many TCP, this many uh, UDP and other protocols are there. And if you select one packet, okay, then you can able to see, you can come to the second part of that screen like details of the selected packet header. So you can be able to view the complete information of the packet header. So what is Ethernet pack? What is inside the Ethernet? What is inside IP? What is inside TCP? What's inside HTTP? So that because of this only, just I go, I want to give you a refresh of that layered approach. So layer two, internet protocol is layer three. This is TCP is layer four. Then HTTP is an application layer layer five. We are following TCP IP model. So done. And sir, so how I know what is the packet I'm just referring to? That's the thing. The first you can see the frame four. Yes, that is a reference. Which frame you are referring to, or which packet you are referring to, that's the thing. And below that, you can get the information of all this in as hexadecimal format. Even you can see that what is the data which is transmitted in Wireshark. Okay. So if you open Wireshark, normally it will be showing the screen like this. So what I will do, I will stop my presentation. I'm going to uh, open the Wireshark from my PC so that you can view and we can uh, go for some live captures. So after this, I think only uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So what I am going to do, I have already installed Wireshark. So I am just going to open Wireshark. Okay, so I have opened the Wireshark. This will be your first screen. Uh, sorry, Gomadi, you know, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So just for confirmation, I request. Okay, so this will be your screen after opening this Wireshark network analyzer. So I'm having so many uh, like adapters. Okay, it is showing me so many adapters. I'm having only one NIC and one wireless, one local area NIC, one wireless, one Bluetooth, okay, and USB is also there. So it will be listing what are all the uh, interfaces or uh, from which interface you want to capture the packets. So now I can see there is some graph going on. It's wireless network. Yes, I'm using my mobile data to connect to my laptop to show this uh, presentation. So it's purely a wireless. So before going to this, how can I select my network adapter? So there is, so go to your command prompt. Open your command prompt. So first you have to check what's your IP configuration and your MAC address. So to get all these things, you have to use the command IP IP config slash all so that it will display all of your interfaces. Okay. In this, I can be able to see what is my host name because uh, why I specifically just showing that host name is uh, the second capture. We are going to see how it's resolved. Okay. This is my host name, my PC's name, and Bluetooth adapter. As of now, I'm not using Bluetooth, so it is disconnected. And wireless LAN adapter. So connection to that's also I have the, it's not connected I'm it's showing as disconnected but you can see that every device having one MAC information MAC address okay then wireless network adapter yes it is connected what is the manufacturing what is the chipset use it's a Qualcomm okay it's a dot 11 is wireless it supports BG and N 
and what is my MAC address? Okay. So whatever information I'm highlighting, don't don't think that I'm wasting your time. No, we are going to use this in our uh, caption. We are going to see that. Okay. Well, and what's my IP address? Forty three dot one forty five. Okay, and I think all the others I really I don't need because I'm going to use my wireless LAN adapter to capture the packet. Okay. Yes. What I'm going to do as I'm going to first we will see ping. Okay. So you know what is the purpose of ping? Just to check the connectivity between one source and one destination or between two IP addresses. I can say that two IP addresses. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to ping google.com or google.co.in whether Google is accessible or Google is reachable from my laptop. So ping google.co.in and I need continuous packet because I have to start my Wireshark. So just I'm giving an option as hyphen P. Okay. So I can be able to see picking Google, this is some IP address with 32 bytes. So reply from this IP, reply from this IP, TTL is time to leave is 53. Why? Okay. So continuously I'm getting the packets. Okay. So normally this ping is a protocol. So normally ping is a command which will use ICMP as the protocol, you know, internet control protocol. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start. So you can use the file, uh, file, file menu to start. If not, you can just use this first command start capture. So what I need, I need only ICMP now. Package. Oh, I have not selected the interface. See, there is no interface was selected. So I have to first select the interface. Okay, now I have selected the interface. I can able to see the ICMP packets. Okay, I stopped it. You, you can see that. Okay, so I will explain first. What's the packet number? I think there are so many other pa uh, packets also sent in the network, but now we are filtering only ICMP. And there's something packet number is 155 and the time starting from that time, what is the millisecond like 0.58 milliseconds after 0.58 milliseconds from my source. So I have to remove that. You can see because last time it was showing some name, so I don't want to show you first. First, you can understand. And in 174, I can I have restarted this capture, and in 0.68 second, I'm sending one packet 192.168.43.145. That was my IP address. You can see. Okay, I have stopped. IP config. That is my IP address. So. This is 192.168.43.145 and my MAC address is 30F7, I think the last three is 2963DD, okay. So this is my IP and Google 216.58.197.35, protocol is ICMP, length is 74 and echo, it's a ping request and there is some sequence number 1239 and another one sequence number. So the time to leave TTL. TTL is like till 128 hops, it will 
living. Okay. So I told you the frame number, you can always see, just you can see that highlighted 174, frame 174. Okay. So this is the header and we will go with layer 2 first. Ethernet. Under Ethernet, there will be source MAC and destination MAC. So source MAC is my PC. So you can see that 2963DD. That was my 2963DD, the last three octets. The total MAC is 30F772, 2963DD. So the last three octets, it's showing us 2963DD. So you can see that. Okay. So that is my source. So where I'm sending this packet, it is sending to some other MAC address. So I'm trying to Google. Okay. Really, I don't know whether it's a Google's MAC address, Google server MAC address or not, because it will be some dummy MAC address where they will be diverting the traffic. Why they have to divert? See, I'm one of the users. Say, like there will be millions and millions of users in the network. And if everyone try to ping Google server, so in, in one second itself, I'm just getting like uh, six packets, one request, one reply, one request, one reply in your in the capture. So you think that if all the users are trying to ping Google, then the server will respond only for the ping request and it won't serve the purpose, like it won't give any HTTP. So server will be utilized mainly for this ping issue. So what they will do, they will block the ping for the original server, that server and they will be diverting all these ping requests a dummy server where they will be having their own MAC address. So this is some MAC address which they have done. And you can see that source MAC, destination MAC. This will be there in your Ethernet header. Okay. So under that, you can see one LG bit and IG bit. So what is LG bit? So IG, I think you can see that it's an individual address. Okay. So IG bit is nothing but it's a least significant bit in the MAC, which shows that whether it's a, what type of traffic is sent, whether it's a unicast traffic or it's a multicast traffic or it's a broadcast traffic. So here it is set to zero and you can able to see that it is a unicast traffic. Yes, IG bit, individual address, unicast. So it's a unicast traffic. Then LG bit, LG bit the second, uh, least significant bit or we will call that's a UL bit means that universal bit or unique bit means that this every MAC address is hot coded you cannot change your MAC address okay every device will be having a MAC address it will be hot coded by the company so there are standards IENA standard is there they will hot code it so if it is showing as zero means that it is a factory default so you can see the globally unique MAC address, unique address. So it's zero. If it is set to one, what will be there? If it is set to one, manually the administrator or the user has changed the MAC address of the device. So that I can show you in the destination address LG bit. You can see that one. So it's clearly giving you that it's a locally administered MAC address. This is not the factory default. So as I told you, they are using a dummy server and the ping requests are diverted to a dummy MAC address, which is user has configured just to showcase that yeah, Google is accessible. So it is marked as one. If IG bit is marked as one in source that our destination MAC means that it can be broadcast or it can be multicast packets. But you know what is broadcast and multicast, so I don't want to explain. So it can be, if it is changed as one, then it will be uh, giving you an information. It's, yeah, it's a broadcast packet or it's a multicast packet. Okay, then this is layer two packet. So what is the uh, header of layer two? So this is the header. There will be preamble, frame delimiter, destination address, source address, what's the length, data and frame check sequence. So where is it? I have not seen that. Yes, we have seen only the destination address, source address. So all the other things are here. Okay. So what's the encapsulation type? It's Ethernet. And what's the frame number? <coughs> Sorry. What's the frame length? So length they have marked. And what are the other informations? How much capture length? 
so it is also going to give you how the frame is marked so you have studied about the encapsulation and de-encapsulation of the packet when you transmit from one source to other source so ethernet packet ethernet type i then its ip header is there then icmp header is there then there is a data so now we have seen ethernet header then we can go for ip so the type is ip4 ip version 4 so ip version 4 protocol what is the source ip it's from my laptop which is having 192.168.43.145 and the destination is 216.58.197.35 that is google so it's version 4 so in text they have just changed it 100 means that version 4 and what is the header length it's 20 bytes okay there is one service called as differentiated differentiated service dscp so previously it was called as type of services so what do you mean by type of services if i'm sending voice and data in the same network which should have the highest priority whether voice or data so why should having the highest priority so this type of service will come into picture new voice packet should be getting dropped from the network so uh, data packets can be get dropped because if there is a tcp then it will be retransmitted so voice traffic will be having the highest priority okay so under this dscp we are having some four or five fields as per the values which we are giving dscp code point they have given okay so packet priority whether it's low delay there should not be any delay for voice packets whether there should be high throughput yes there should be high throughput and highly reliable services and delayed packets are lowest priority packets so like this we can configure this dscp also once we have configured then it will be uh, available in this the uh, information will be available in this and the next is congestion you have heard about the congestion notification if uh, normally in the bus topology you have heard about that so much of congestion because it is a half duplex network of two users if they are uh, transmitting at the same time then there will be a bottleneck just for your understanding i am taking the uh, bus topology even a star every topology we are having the congestion okay so if there is any congestion notification if there's a congestion notification then so much of packets will be getting dropped your network will be slow and that can also be checked from here so any congestion notification is there and what is the total length of my ip header it's uh, given and what's the identification and what are the other flags there are so many flags whether it's a resort bit so it's not sent resort bit is like uh, we are not currently using that and we can go with other two things fragment and more fragment sorry don't fragment and more fragment i'm sending a uh, uh, like a jumbo packet like 8000 bytes of packet i cannot send that packet i am having a limitation 15540 packet okay 1520 packet can be sent so you have to go with fragmentation option but you don't want to fragment your packet means you can set this don't fragment through the command line we can set it and we can always have this as one if don't fragment is set we'll try to send the packet if not it will be dropped in the network itself or it will be queued and then send it it won't fragment the packet as per the bandwidth availability and more fragments if the packet is fragmented if it is sending to the destination so you will be getting the information yes fragments are checked and fragment offset is going to give whether that packet is the last packet or in in between packet so fragment offset if you set as one then that will give you that yeah it is the last packet how long this packet can live in the network so 128 seconds it will be uh, living in the network so not seconds it's ams i think so time to live is 128 and what is the protocol used to send the data it's icmp so we are going into the icmp header okay i think source and destination we have already seen that okay what is in the icmp header so there are there is a request and there is a reply so for always for the request icmp will be used like type 8 for reply, the ICMP type will be zero. You can see that. Now I have clicked reply and you can see the type is zero echo ping reply. So the header is going to be same other than this. Okay, there will be a checksum to check whether the correct data is there or not. And 
you can always see that like one blue color thing that is the response so the response frame is available in packet number 182 so in the top one you can able to see that after 174 182 is the second packet that is a reply so even in this capture you can see that the request for this reply is 174 so this analysis they are going to give you very good information so you don't want to worry just directly you can see this packet and you can check what is going on in the network and data so i have just sent a ping whether google is live or not so what data will be sent i don't know but i can see that some 61 62 63 64 some data is sent so you can just go down come down if you click that you can see that a b c d is sent your alphabets has been sent in that packet because it's a padding so some information a b c d e f g uh, till w after that they started with a b c so there's 32 bytes so that amount of data has been transmitted to check same thing you can see in your reply also in the reply packet also now i have clicked the reply packet same information you have got it okay so this is hex format and what information you are sending what mainly you can see the data information in this the bottom column middle column you would be getting the header information and the top one you can capture the packets okay so here i can able to see ip addresses but still i don't want to see the ip address i want to see the names in my network i have already configured the names okay so resolve my network names and resolve my transport names so what i'm doing i have just clicked two options under the capture tab options okay so i'm just starting that see and continue okay, i have stopped my ping so i will restart can able to see same information but still your source name is my uh, laptop name which is i have shown in the ip config where is that yes here l79 i have shown you that l793 s6 c2 so that is the source and the destination was google and i have sent icmp all the others are the same the sequence number is the same you can see that the, for request and reply there will be same sequence numbers and for request TPL is 128 but for reply within 52 seconds I can able to get the reply so here also in the command line you can able to see that in 52 seconds see this is TTL in 52 the TTL is max is 52 in 43 milliseconds you have got your response so maximum is 52 after that this packet will be getting blocked you won't be getting the uh, reply packet from this so this even if you, have, if you know the name or if you want to know the name, yes, you can go to the caption, you can go for the options and you can get this information. So I'm having another one file which uh, I want to show to you. Oh, I have to stop it. Okay, I have stopped it. So one file. Five minutes I'm going to take extra. Okay, so 1235 will close it. Just I want to show you uh, since I have closed that. Okay. So 
this is already a captured packet. Just I want to show you about the DHCP. I think everyone knows that nowadays we are not going to set the IP address uh, individually. So it's it's purely like uh, configured from the server. So we are having a DHCP server, dynamic host configuration protocol. So the pool of uh, uh, IP addresses will be stored in the server. And if you connect to that server, then you will be getting that IP address. Most probably in the same campus, if you are connecting for every time, it will be you will be getting the most probably the same address. Okay, but if you are connecting like uh, once in a week, then your address will be changed because it won't have that memory, and then it will be that IP address will be leased for other uses. So when you uh, go for the DSCP, because in your NIC card you have to go and enable the DSCP option. So by enabling that, you will be getting the uh, your there won't be any static IP address in your uh, NIC. So it has to go and get the packet. So from the source at that time, I am not having IP address. So my laptop is not having IP address. So I don't know who is the server also. So what it will do? It will broadcast the information. So you can see that the packet number one source is zero 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 and destination is two fifty five. So you can see that, as I told you, the LG bit has to be uh, one is the source and it's a destination. You can see that. See, my destination is a source is I'm the only one. So it's individual address. OK, so I'm not having any address. So it's zero. But in the destination field, you can see that uh, IG bit and LG bit is changed. It's sending to some address. It's a broadcast packet. So it's FFFF. And IG bit is also it's showing us multicast or it's a broadcast packet. So it is a DSCP. So whenever I'm sending a DSCP packet, so I will also have the IP header from which source to which destination. I'll be having all this information and it will be a, since it's a broadcast, I can't expect any response. So it will be under UDP, so would be okay. So UDP and DSCP protocol header will be there. What is that? First, I have to discover where is the server. So I'm just sending a discover packet. It's broadcasted. It's a boot request and hardware is Ethernet type and boot flags. What is the client IP? As of now, I'm not having any IP. And what's the server IP? I'm not having any information on that. So DSCP message type is it's a discover message. You can see that it's a discover message. So I'm sending that information. And it shows that it's the end of the packet and padding is just to um, have the full complete size of that. So you can be able to see the discover packet. So after that, somebody is offering. So since it's a discover, this packet will be sent to all the uh, devices, even the servers or all the users in the network. So if it's a DSCP server, it's DSCP enabled in the server, so it will capture that information and it will send the information so that is going to be a unicast information you can see it's a unicast you can see that zero zeros lg and ig bits are zero zeros so it is an individual address it's a factory default and it's individual address unicast here also it's unicast and the server is sending it's 192.168.0.1 to 10 what is the 10 because i don't know what is 10 and i really uh, have not got the address because my client ip is Initially, it was 00. zero. Now, the server is giving me one IP address that is 0 0.10, and my server IP is 0 0.1. So, it is an offer. So, after the offer, then directly, if it will be a uh, request, yes, I want this IP, I want to use this IP. So, that information will also be initiated from my source. That's also broadcast. Then the server will be giving the information. Yes, this packet is only for this IP is assigned to you and you will be having the information. I think this you can see. Yeah, your client IP address is 10. So this is called as a DORA process. Discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. DORA process. So with this DORA process, you can able to see if there is any issues. I'm not getting IP address to my PC. I'm using a DSCP server in my network. So how can I get that IP? like this, just you capture the packet from first check whether you are uh, in your NIC card, your uh, DSCP option is enabled. So if it is enabled, 
just go and check, uh, have a packet capture, have a wire shop, have a packet capture and check, yes, I'm having my, just I'm going to my NIC and just show that the DSCP is enabled. So obtain IP address automatically. So this is the car thing. I'm not having any IP address now. And it is a DSCP. So you have to get the IP address automatically. Okay. So that is the uh, thing. Okay. Just two so keys I have given. So this is the Dora process. Maybe you were studied in your computer network, but you were not seen what all the fields, how the header will be there and how what will be the IP header. This is the IP header. What is the version? What is the header length? I told you about type of service, what's the total length of my IP and what's the identification, fragment offset, whether it don't, uh, result, don't fragment or more fragment, how long this packet is going to live, what is the protocol, checksum, checksum is used to validate whether the information is correct, received, send, a, send, a, uh, send information and the received information is correct and what's your source IP, destination IP and padding. So this is the point and even you can go to sites, you can just browse Google, you can get the info, I think, uh, information like, uh, just search for PCAP, okay, dot PCAP, BACP.PCAP, OSPF.PCAP, you can open that Wireshark, uh, open the PCAP in Wireshark and you can see how the OSPF, hello informations are transmitted. Hello interval, what is a hello interval, what is a dead interval, how the neighbors are identified, how the routing table is built. So all these informations will be available in these packets and you can see that today I really I thought of giving you an example for VRRP and uh, I think virtual router redundancy protocol and OSPF but I, I really, uh, we have exceeded the time, it's already five minutes late so, so I'm going to stop it. If you need me, we will continue with the session too. Okay, so this is the time for question and answers. Yes, I'm ready to answer your questions related to this topic as of now. Uh, thank you, Ramanujam, sir. Uh, uh, what a wonderful session and uh, have some demonstration to the participants. Participants, any queries, please, you can chat through the chat box or you can uh, unmute your mic and you can directly uh, ask to them. As yes, please. yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to uh, answer any questions later to this topic now. Or if you are having some doubts after that, you can send queries to uh, Mr. Professor Gomadina Ayam so that he can contact me. Any, any, any queries from participants, please? Sir, so one of the question. Uh, from yes. uh, of our student, can we sniff packet uh -huh. of the remote system? Can we sniff packet from the remote system? Uh -huh. Yes, we can. Okay. So why you want to go for a, a see remote system is that system is also having one IP address, correct? So that we can always go. To the network, I think I have a PC connected to the network, and then I can give that any packet going from this source IP. I want to sniff it, so I can get it yes. from anywhere. See, normally this via packet protocol analysis or the packet monitoring system will be working in promiscuous mode. So you want, first you want to know what is a promiscuous mode. I can tap my PC anywhere in the network, and I can collect all the data from the network. And promiscuous mode is it will initiate your NIC card as well as your network device to transmit all the packets to your central processing unit. Means that uh, your router or switch central processing unit, so that the Wireshark, this software tool, will directly capture what is going on in the central processing, what is processing, and then it will capture all the data. It will have a copy. I have shown you only the live captures. If you want to save this in file and if you want to do some offline analysis that also you can do so answer for your question is yes we can do remote uh, capturing of the packets for a remote pcr remote system thank you sir one more question from mr ravindra jan how to avoid the packet losses sir how to 
how to avoid packet losses yes uh, so first of all uh, question is good but i need to know when will be the packet loss so if there is some congestion something issue from my end yes sir yes sir Okay, sorry. 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 So if there is, if there is a congestion in the network, sorry. Yes, no. Yeah, no, no problem. Because uh, I I was searching for the screen and then I got rejoined. Okay. 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 See, sorry for the interruption. Uh, yes, see, if there is a congestion in the network, then there will be more packet drops in the network. So that's we, we will consider that as a performance issue in the network because of the packet drops. Your network slowness that you can able to face the network slowness in the network. So to avoid that, you have to see, you have to go and capture from your access switches first, yeah. and then see is there any broadcast is going on from your. From the users, anything, anyone, any any student or anyone have made a loop in the network, so that you can able to identify. These are just captures, and you have to do the analysis, and we have to go back to the network to see where is the packet drop and how it is seen. So, uh, for packet drops, you have to always go through the hop by hop path analysis from the access, then. Uh, from the distribution means normally we will call this. There will be two connectivity. One is egress and egress. Ingress, ingress is the input to the uh, switch, and egress is the output. So from the access, it's uh, ingress from the distribution. For the uh, distribution, it will be egress. So we have to collect the packet captures simultaneously in both ingress and egress in that wire, and we can able to uh, analyze the packets. We can able to solve the issue. So, in my work, 90 percentage of the issues are solved only because of this protocol analysis or the packet monitoring system. Okay. Any, any next question? Any 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 questions from participants? Okay. Okay, sir. One more questions from my side. Uh, yes. What are the industry issues related to the traffic engineering network traffic engineering side? Uh, yes, see, it is really a vast topic, but still I want to address your question. So you want to know the developments in traffic engineering in the industry are latest, correct? Yes. Yes. So that's the word which I have used initially, like it's a DPI, deep packet inspection. Okay. So we will go into the packet, we will open the packet, live packet. And we will do the analysis. It's not in some other's network. In my switch, okay. Normally there is no concept of router <coughs> in my company. So we will go with it's everything is called a switch. L1 switch or L7 switch. It's a switch. So in I'm having a program. I will be enabling my DPI feature, and I can mark the packets in low red and green. I think like a coloring codes and. I will go into the packet, live packet, I will open the packet, I can check what is the content of the packet and I will stop the packet or I will drop the packet or I will report it to the admin or I will forward the packet or I will process the packet. So really this is one of the major development in traffic engineering because in the access itself I am going to stop all these things with the DPI so that is going to help me to reduce the traffic flow in my network for unnecessary broadcast or unnecessary multicast or more found packets. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. And we are also moving into big data uh, related quantum computing yes. for traffic engineering. Even cloud network also, right? Yeah, uh, cl cloud not only in traffic. Uh, yes, uh, you are specialized in cloud computing, I know. Uh, it's not only for traffic engineering, even for mainly storage. Nowadays, we are considering this cloud computing and uh, cloud networks mainly on the storage area network, SAN related. Previously, we had a server. Now we are not going. We are not using any servers. Even you are having a Google Drive. You are having OneDrive. 
like with Microsoft. So everything is in the cloud. No one knows where is my data. Some somewhere which is uh, unknown to me, it's there, and I I will be paying money for that cloud, or it's free for me like that. So it's not only for traffic engineering; it's for the whole. Now the next development is going with IoT and cloud. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, participants, any queries, please. Otherwise, we will formally conclude the session. Any queries? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, participants. Let I call upon Mr. D. Lakshmanan from Ramcoin Stop Technology uh, to propose a word of thanks. Hello. Yes. Uh, Sir, yes, yes. yes. Um, yes. Sir, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Yes Ramanujam, Technical Manager, Asia Pacific, All Control Solution Enterprise India Private Limited, for his valuable speech on the topic Network Protocol Analyzer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank I would you. like to thank uh, our management to give permission to the webinar program, and also uh, like to give my special thanks to our principal, vice principal, and Kachori, madam. I thank you all the participants. The event could not have been successful without them. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you. Yeah, uh, before concluding, I would like to thank all the participants for your patience because even I have exceeded like 15 minutes uh, uh, above the schedule. So I would like to thank you all the participants and faculty members and even Vijay Lakshmi Madam. Thank you. Uh, especially thanks to Ramanujam sir uh, from my side. Uh, actually, one more information I would like to share from here. Uh, he is my guru in the networking field. Uh, thank you, thank you once again, sir. Kindly accepting my request to uh, provide the wonderful session here. And uh, thank you to all the participants. Uh, here we have shared the feedback link as well as the attendance to you. Please kindly fill that attendance as well as the feedback. You will get the e-certificate. That link will be active for another 15 minutes. Please kindly do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gomudinayam. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.